and welcome to a new episode with Astrid, your APD, your dietitian with T, no C. And I'm joined today by Dr. Naiman, and it's going to be a really, really awesome conversation because we're going to talk about hypertension, uh, diabetes, in general health and longevity. So it's underrated, overrated, but it's going to be really, really fun. And Dr. Naiman is so awesome. Moving now to underrated or overrated. This is all going to be fun. Okay, so this probably could be related to fat loss or longevity and health. It is going to be a little bit different for each. But now, egg consumption for health and longevity. Overrated or underrated? Underrated. Love eggs. Eggs are amazing. Eggs are spectacular. So I'm a huge egg fan. <clears throat> eggs are a staple for me. I highly recommend them. I think they're underrated. And they're very health promoting. So I love eggs. Okay. Multivitamins for health. Overrated or underrated? Uh, super overrated. So like every single multivitamin only exists to make money for the multivitamin manufacturer. And nobody really, really has to take a multivitamin. Uh, you really want to get these micronutrients from your food. Uh, is it a totally terrible idea? No, but like you really don't need it. I don't take one. I don't recommend them routinely. Uh, they're usually not evidence-based, and so I'm not a huge fan. And I agree with that, especially because we, a lot of people think by taking multivitamin, they sort of kind of use that as an insurance policy, and mm -hmm. their their diet is just shit. Uh, right. so yeah, it exactly. doesn't it, it it is not trying to improve their quality the quality of the diet but rather oh i just take a multivitamin i continue mm -hmm. to eat mcdonald's things like that right. mm -hmm. exactly now cardio for health is it underrated or overrated it is underrated everyone has to be doing cardio you have to do cardio like please please do your cardio i'm basically begging all my patients do cardio. You should be doing 20 minutes of cardio a day at a moderate intensity, or you can always trade off intensity for duration. You know, you could do 20 minutes of medium intensity cardio every day. That would be awesome. Or you could do 10 minutes of high intensity cardio or 30 minutes of a lower intensity cardio. You can dial the intensity and duration up and down like a seesaw, but uh, yeah, please do your cardio every day, at least, you know, 20 minutes of moderate intensity. Uh, personally, I like to do high intensity and make it a lot shorter just because I'm trying to solve the equation for the least amount of time. But um, yeah, please do cardio. It's hugely underrated. More cardio, 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 cardio. When, it come, when you say that, um, especially for health, because we know that like, when we're thinking about fat loss, there is not necessarily a huge need for cardio as long as you're in a calorie deficit and you're mm -hmm. also doing resistance training. Uh, but cardio for health, it seems to be a little bit more uh, related to other outcomes as well, especially longevity, fitness. Um, we think about even mental health and different outlets that, cardio can be used as a way to just get yourself in a better mental space and state so definitely cardio for sure is underrated but I, I guess the way that we think we should be thinking about cardio shouldn't be just uh running or doing like as, i don't know high intervals or burpees cardio could be just like moving around just doing walking just walk and um, that as, sim as simple as that well yeah absolutely uh Honestly, for me, I separate exercise into three baskets. There's resistance training, which everybody has to be doing. Please, I'm begging you, uh, do resistance training at least twice a week with a really high level of intensity. Uh, then there's cardio, and the goal of cardio is to get your VO2 max as good as you can get it. You want to be able to you know, jog up a couple flights of stairs and, and not be short of breath, not be winded. You want your resting heart rate really low. Cardio gives you these amazing adaptations where your resting heart rate is super low. You can do uh, bursts of exercise, like run up the stairs, and you're not out of breath at all. Um, and it's just amazing. You know, having a high VO2 max is like a superpower. Uh, but you're probably only going to get those adaptations with a high level of intensity when you exercise. And then the third bucket for me is just walking and general movement. So you kind of want to do three things. Hit 10,000 steps a day, like wear your Apple Watch, wear your Fitbit, and get to 10,000K for just general movement. Do some sort of higher intensity cardio so you can get your VO2 max in the awesome range. 
And then do resistance training at least twice a week because you need more muscle. Whoever, you, anyone listening to this, you want more muscle. I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? More muscle. So it's like you really want to do all three of those. I agree completely. I think it is, I was talking more about just a walking for the normal person who has a lot of weight to lose. Hmm. And like cardio or running is not potentially a, an option at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So at least if you can walk, you already are carrying a lot of weight to begin with as a lot of resistance just getting started with that and obviously building up from their baseline every single person will have a different baseline cardiovascular wise um and fitness wise so you always want to make that baseline better where right. they are from where they are yeah and, and honestly uh, if you're morbidly obese just walking might be the same uh cardiovascular load that that somebody who's really thin gets from running so uh yeah depending on where you're starting that walking might be cardio absolutely now, you mentioned the 10,000 steps, but um, let's reassure it. So is it 10,000 steps a day, that number specifically, um, good for health, overrated or underrated? I think that's underrated. I, I really like 10,000 steps a day. That's a really good metric. Um, and I think your average person who tries to hit that is going to actually benefit hugely from doing so. So I think that's underrated. I think everyone should be wearing an Apple watch or something. I'm asking my patients, where are your step counter, count your steps, try to hit 10 K. It's a really good goal. Um, that's pretty solid advice, I think. And I, so I think it's underrated. I agree. Now, again, I think it is good to know what the baseline of the person is, because if mm -hmm. you take a person who is just doing 2000 steps, you won't let them, you won't tell them, oh, just jump to 10,000 steps straight away, because that's, that's probably where they're going to throw the towel and say, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of getting them to a place where, you, yeah, now you're ready to do now 10,000 steps on a daily basis. Um, mm -hmm. Would that be your approach or you kind of say, no, you have to do 10,000 steps a day? No, like all of this stuff, I, I'm going to copy Coach Greg Doucette and say just like harder than last time or more than last yeah. time. Right? Yeah. So you're just trying to get it, get it higher than last time. And that's the goal for all of this stuff. You want your uh, you know, protein to energy ratio a little bit higher than it was before. And you want your step count a little higher than it was before. And you want your weight on the bar a little bit higher than it was before. And you're just trying to progress all of these things in a slow, sustainable fashion where you still enjoy the process and you're not killing yourself. But like just the same way I wouldn't tell somebody to just bench press 500 pounds out of the gate. Uh, it would be like, okay, take your step count, figure out where you're at and try to move the needle. But I do think 10,000 K is a pretty good goal for your good average goal. person. Yeah. Okay. Gly glycemic index, is it overrated or underrated? Um, it's probably appropriately rated. Like, I, I'm not a huge glycemic uh, index fan. I'm more worried about glycemic load, which is really just how many grams of carbs you're eating. Um, so the load I'm more worried about. But I think most people know, oh, hey, if I just have orange juice and toast for breakfast and that's it, uh, I'm going to feel awful three hours later. You know what I mean? So uh, I would say that's appropriately rated. Okay. Resistance training for health and longevity, underrated or overrated? Underrated. I think your, your general populace is doing no resistance training at all. And that's a disaster. This is a public health disaster. I think resistance training is the single greatest public health initiative that could ever happen. Like if, every, if I just snapped my fingers and everyone started lifting tomorrow, uh, that would be huge. That would be bigger than anything else I could think of. So I think that's hugely underrated. And it, everyone has to be doing a resistance training. This, sh this should be like mandatory. Like this should be a law or something. I don't know how to make that happen. If you're in a resistance training, you get a fine $5,000 mm -hmm. a there month. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Organic foods, overrated or underrated? Um, it's overrated. I mean, you know, I, I would be a huge fan of, you know, regenerative farming techniques or anything that was environmentally friendly. But unfortunately, organic isn't necessarily... Um, checking all the boxes in terms of healthier and better for the environment. And a lot of it's not evidence-based. So it, it's kind of a buzzword, although, yeah, it's, it's overrated. I mean, I do honestly buy organic stuff sometimes, but it's probably overrated. I, get, I mean, it is, it is okay for, like, when we think about what you mentioned about the spectrum, um, some foods might be obviously much better in terms of few things, in terms of a few minerals or vitamins but overall it seems like the difference is not that huge and sometimes what you're actually paying is the organic brand rather than the actual composition being superior in your food 
Right, right. Like in a perfect world, yes, all my all my vegetables are grown with unicorn tears and all my meat is, you know, panda massaged and it's all just like plated with gold or whatever. But it's probably not that. Uh, I mean, it's there's the gap between organic and non for health uh, reasons is really tiny. Yeah. All right. Two more. The 80-20 rule principle. Is it overrated or underrated for it's, everything? It's underrated for everything in life. So... <clears throat> I think if people knew that just by putting like 20% of effort into resistance exercise, they could get, you know, 80% of their gains, boom. Uh, like so many people just don't even bother because they're like, oh, if I really wanted to, you know, look good, I have to go to the gym an hour every day forever. And it's just, I can't do it. And the bar to entry is so high. And if people knew that they could just do like some push ups and pull ups and just put, put in this solid 20% and get 80% of their benefits. Uh, I mean, that's a really, really big deal. Like, you know, I, I pretty much never work out more than 15 minutes a day or something. And that's, that's the 20%. I'm getting 80% of the return on my investment. If, if I wanted, you know, more muscle or whatever, I'd have to put in like exponentially more time. I, I would have to spend hours in the gym. And so I think that once you put in this 20% and get 80% of your returns, that's really worth your time. And that makes it, that kind of democratizes fitness and diet and, so, yeah, I'm a huge fan of this Pareto principle, this 80-20 thing, you know, and you just have to know where to expand your 20% of effort to get this huge payoff. And what about when we think about the mindset of 80% of your diet should be whole foods, but you can still be some kind, some kind, somehow flexible and have that 20% extra, the things you do like, and have that balance. So 80-20 might sort of act on the other way around. Right. Uh, that's the other way around, but I totally agree with that. Like if my diet is 80% super clean, just like lean meat, green vegetables, and then 20% of it is just lucky charms and, you know, frosted flakes, I could totally pull that off. Like that would actually work for most people. And uh, I, I might have to give it a 90-10 for a few people out there who try to push the envelope. But yeah, you can really get away with quite a bit of that. And again, if you uh, if your diet's 80% clean, you can throw some donuts and pizza in there, definitely. Most people can get away with that. And that's realistic, yep. too. Celery juice, overrated or underrated? Um, I don't even know, like, what's in celery juice? Like, like to be honest, I don't know much about celery juice. Is that good? Like, you tell me. I, I, I'm going to say overrated. It's, uh, it is so overrated. Um, people use it for detox or like use get, getting their greens in. I don't know. I, I just think it is so overrated. Uh, I, yeah, I like that. Uh, let's say it's hugely overrated. Don't drink celery juice. I don't get it. 